ever wondered how to build a self-powered, compact, variable, constant current, active load? No? That means you're a normal person. Good for you. But for any other weirdos out there, in this video I'm going to show you how I design this little thing. And afterwards, a bit of testing. Just to make sure it works. So a friend of mine gave me this heatsink a while back and since it looked really cool I decided to put it to good use. And the application that I decided to do is build an active load. What is that? Well it's a circuit that you can use to waste some electrical energy and make some heat. Just a thing to do in the summer when it's 35 degrees outside. Now the most common application for a current sink or active load is to test power supplies or batteries. If you want to test the current capabilities of an energy source you need a load. And since you don't have all possible values of resistors to be able to test at any voltage and current, you can build an active load. Basically, it will work like a variable resistor when testing power supplies. To make this thing, I will need a constant current sync circuit. I will set the input voltage range to 2.5 up to 20 volts. To determine the current range, I have to take into consideration the heat sink dissipation capabilities. My objective is to not exceed 70 degrees on the heat sinks, so I don't burn myself if I touch it. I don't have exact values, but I found some online heat sink calculator and it gave me a value of about 5 Kelvin per watt of heat resistance. From this I worked out I can dissipate about 6 watts of heat. So considering the voltage span, I have this current curve at various uh, voltages. I will set the limit as 2 amps so I don't have a very tiny range at high voltages. The op amp needs to run at very low voltages, so a rail to rail type is needed. I will go for the MCP6001 single op amp. And since its maximum operating voltage is 5.5 volts, I will also need a 2.5 or 3.3 volt LDO. Also, considering that I'm making a self power device, I cannot use a field effect transistor. That usually has a large threshold voltage, so I have to go for a bipolar transistor. And to have a high enough gain, I need to use a Darlington type. I decide to use the TIP121 transistor. The shunt resistor needs to ensure a precise measurement without the cost of high voltage drop. I cannot use a very small resistor since the op amp has a maximum uh, input offset of 6 millivolts, and the smaller the shunt resistor, the more current this offset voltage will influence the extreme currents of the circuit. So I will have to go with 150 milli milliohm uh, resistor. Next, voltage reference. This thing needs to be a stable voltage reference, so a TLV431 1.25 volt reference is used, and it needs to be variable between the voltages needed to set the necessary currents. If we set 2 amps as maximum uh, current, then the maximum voltage will be 0.3 volts. So the following resistor values and circuit is needed. Final thing to take into account is the stability of the circuit. To prevent any unwanted oscillations, the op amp gain will be limited at high frequencies. We will set a crossover frequency of 100 kHz and because more is not needed. So these two components are also added. And this is the final circuit. Let's see how well it actually works. So these are the final components and it's time to put everything together. To ensure a proper heat transfer, I'm using some thermal paste. And also, to have a bit of distance between the heatsink and the PCB, I added some spacers. And everything is locked in place with some screws. Now, since I'm 100% confident that this thing will never overheat, I added this wooden frame, so I don't burn the table, or myself. And the final element is a knob. So, it's time to see if the device actually works. First thing to check is if the circuit is stable. One of the things that could go wrong is that the circuit could start to oscillate. I will be measuring using my laboratory supply, which is quite noisy, as can be seen in this measurement of voltage over a resistor. But this is actually a good thing, since the oscillations will be the trigger that will highlight any problems in the circuit. Using the same setup, let's see my circuit. Well, it's not supposed to look like that at all. Oh, and it gets much worse if I increase the voltage. I went back to my simulations to see what I did wrong, 
and noticed I was not simulating using the correct transistor. After placing the correct simulation models and adding wire inductances, I managed to reproduce the oscillations. Turns out the chosen TIP1-1 Darlington has quite a lot of internal capacitance, which coupled with the wire's inductance creates a nice oscillator, under cer certain conditions. Since I have no other Darlington transistor, I had to make one from individual components, and ended up making a completely new PCB. It's exactly the same circuit, just with different transistors, with much lower parasitic capacitances. So this is the final schematic, Mark II. Now if I retest it, the oscillations are at a much lower value. Good. This way I don't have to rebuild everything. Yet again. So this will be the setup I will use to perform the next measurements. There are three major things that I wish to test. The minimum current, which is influenced by the op-amp offset and circuit current consumption. Verification of the constant current property. How constant is my constant current sink? Very important. And finally, see exactly how much the circuit actually heats up. For this, I'm using a variable power supply, an ammeter, or milliamps in this case, voltmeter, and finally, temperature sensor, which I'm using to measure the temperature on the heat sink. So let's get started. Okay, so we see that the current consumption is constant throughout the voltage range. Small difference being right at the beginning because of our 3.3 volt voltage regulator. Okay, let's see how constant the current actually is. For this, we will set the, a certain current at certain voltage, change the voltage, and see if the current changes. It shouldn't, but we need to make sure. So we see that the current remains constant throughout the voltage range. Our circuit is working as a constant current sink. Finally, we need to measure how much it heats up. For this, I wrote down the initial temperature, it was 29 degrees, and now I will need to dissipate the maximum power that I will get to dissipate in practice, so 6 watts, and see exactly how hot my radiator gets. So for this, I will set the current of 1 amp and 6 volts. So we have our 6 watts of power dissipated. Let's see how hot the radiator will actually get. This is gonna take a while. So after about half an hour of waiting, the temperature is roughly stable at about 58 degrees. That gives us a temperature increase of 29 degrees Celsius. Is this good? Is it bad? Well, if we go to the maximum ambient temperature that we considered of 40 degrees, with this temperature increase, we are still below the 70 degrees maximum threshold that we imposed. All in all, this circuit came out just right. Can't wait to use it to measure a power supply or use it in some other applications. Hope you liked this video and you got some useful information out of this. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. And see you next time. Bye bye!